Hi, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday live stream where we bring nutrition to you that hopefully will be impactful and tie it all together to the lean life and how you're living your leanest and healthiest life. Tonight, I want to talk about gastric reflux. Hold on a minute. Let me get my live stream up. Give me a minute here, guys. Okay, here we go. Let's talk about it. Why I really wanted to um, bring this to you guys is the relationship, again, this has to the gut microbiome. And I know that this month I'd said we we're going to bring in the gut bacteria and how it all relates. Well, I thought I would just take it in little bite-sized pieces. And so tonight I wanted to talk about GERD which is gastroesophageal reflux, gastric reflux, much people know it as. Talk a little bit, I mean, and by the way, 25% of the population have this, okay? So it's pretty common. And a lot of people don't know that there's a big connection between this acid reflux and what's going on in your gut. And that's what I wanted to bring in today. Now, typically what happens with acid reflux. First of all, what is acid reflux, right? So I don't want to take for granted that you may know what that is. So let's talk about it. It's a chronic disease that occurs when the stomach acid or bile, and we'll talk about that, bile acids flow into the food pipe in the esophagus area. And this irritates the lining and it causes heartburn. A lot of people will feel it after they eat or if they lay down, they've eaten a meal. And it's just this burning feeling, very uncomfortable. And so why this is such an issue, right, is because how we're treating it is just to give people anti-acids. So we're giving people medication that lowers the stomach acid, which makes sense, right? I mean, after all, if you have acid coming up from your stomach, going up into your food pipe, then logically, what you would want to do is take medication that would reduce that symptom. But what in fact does that mean when you're taking the medication? And is really that the root cause? So when we talk about acid reflux, a lot of times they'll say, well, you know, the root cause are certain foods you eat. So a lot of times they'll say, well, you can avoid the triggers. And I always love that, the triggers, okay, fine. That's like saying what causes the symptoms, but we're still not getting to the root cause. So what are the triggers? What are the things that cause this? Spicy foods, fatty foods, chocolate, mint, some of the basic, you know, citrus, tomato. A lot of times when people eat these foods, they're going to get that burning acid coming up through the food pipe. So ideally, when we look at what is the connection between this um, reflux and bacteria overgrowth, I think I'm going to start with H. pylori, which is a bacteria that is in the stomach area. And a lot of times this is what's associated with ulcers. And in this study, they talk about the relationship. And so right away, we're getting a relationship with the fact there's a bacteria in the gut that can be related with this reflux. So in this study, it shows H. pylori infection is a risk factor for the development of, of ulcers and also gastritis. And that's where the lining of the stomach gets irritated and also the effects of the whole gastric function. So right away, there's science that shows this H. pylori can be causing a lot of problems with the gastric area. The pathology of GERD is determined by the failure of the lower esophageal sphincter. So that's like a little flapper, a little flapper door that can get defective and can actually cause that stomach acid to go up into the food pipe. So we can actually have a defect in a little flapper, in a valve. And also it can be related to a hernia, obesity. So if you're really overweight, sometimes that can push the stomach acid, especially if you're overweight in the abdominal area, that can push that stomach acid, obviously pregnancy, and certain drugs. 
So all these things can affect the stomach acid, primarily because they can affect the little valve. They can damage the valve. So that's a, a definitely what we know can happen. And they can test for that and they can see if that valve is damaged. But in most cases, this is not the case, okay? And so with GERD, what we're seeing is that we're taking stomach acids, we're taking uh, anti-stomach acids, we're taking medication to reduce the stomach acid, these PPIs, these reflux medication, causes a lowering of the stomach acid. Now, a lot of times people think, well, isn't that a good thing? Because aren't we having an issue with stomach acid being a problem coming up through the food pipe? But what tends to happen with these medications is they actually cause the stomach acid to decrease, especially over prolonged use. Now, these uh, medications were not designed to be on for years and years and years. And a lot of patients that come to me, honestly, it can be a decade that they've been on these medications. But what this can do is it can actually decrease the, the acid in the stomach, which then makes the stomach less able to fight off bacteria. So these bad bacteria actually don't survive in a lot of stomach acid. So when your stomach acid is impaired, because you're taking medications to lower it because of the symptoms, you actually can cause more uh, probability of having bacteria in the stomach area and also in the GI tract. So this actually can increase the gut bacteria because if the bacteria isn't getting killed in the stomach because the stomach acid is low, these bacteria make it into the gut, which should have never happened, but it happens because the acid in the stomach isn't where it needs to be. And then this will affect digestion. And here we go, because we're going to talk back again about digestion. It's like this loop. So you have gut bacteria that actually can disable these enzymes. So you have low stomach acid. That means you're going to have an increase in bacteria that gets into the gut, which it shouldn't do. And then this can affect our digestive enzymes. So now we don't do as well as, of digesting our food. And this leads to more gut bacteria and also irritable bowel syndrome. You can have low, slow gastric emptying. A lot of the food stays in the gut longer because when food can't get digested, it doesn't have a lot of motility. It doesn't move through that intestinal tract as well. You can get diarrhea, because this, the body's trying to get rid of the contents and it pulls a lot of water in, or the opposite, you can have constipation. And this is very much what we see with irritable bowel syndrome. Irritable bowel, just like it sounds, very irritable, is when that bowel is just not uh, cooperating. It's not that it's inflamed, it's just having difficulty digesting food, you get a lot of bloating, a lot of gas, and this is the body trying to move that through. But this also has a relationship with acid reflux. And so I pulled some studies here, and this study particularly talks about some of the nutrition interventions, but also in the highlighted area, this case reports on the development of PPI induced. So those are the medications that lower the stomach acids for hypochloridia, which is low stomach acid. So what they're saying here is a lot of this can also lead to other areas, unresolved gastritis, which is that lining of the stomach that can get irritated and also related to irritable bowel syndrome. So here's the relationship. You've got these anti-acids that are affecting the stomach acid that in effect can cause more gut bacteria and show up as irritable bowel syndrome. So this uh, article talks about nutrition interventions. Maybe instead of taking all these medications, we can maybe start looking at the root cause. Maybe we can start thinking what we can do to reduce the likelihood of getting this. So in the second part of this study, um, I thought it was interesting and I highlighted that reflux can be caused by various factors. And we talked about that medications. Um, also it talks about abdominal fat, hernia, bile reflux and bile reflux. We'll, we'll get to bile reflux later, 
And also the overconsumption of a fat in a meal can cause overexcretion of HCL. We're going to talk about the fat in the meal because that can also increase GERD because of this cycle of poor digestion. When you have poor digestion, you're going to have more gas and more issues where that can actually push some of that stomach acid into the food pipe. So this low stomach acid has detrimental health effects. So if we look in the highlighted area in the second paragraph, if you want to follow along with me, this low stomach acid has detrimental health effects with long-term use. That means a lot of these anti-acids you're taking, lowering your stomach acid, can contribute to autoimmune disorders. It can play in a lot of other triggers with intestinal hormones. It can affect the absorption of a lot of important vitamins and minerals, right? Like folate and B12. B12 is one of those vitamins that needs hydrochloric acid. It needs stomach acid. So if you're taking a lot of these antacids, these PPIs, these proton pump inhibitors, lowering that stomach acid, you could also be decreasing your level B12 because B12 needs stomach acid to do its dirty deal, to get through and be able to be absorbed in the body. So also it can affect uh, calcium, magnesium, potassium, zinc, and iron. These are major minerals. So this lack of stomach acid, because it's being lowered through the medications, can affect our health. And the bad part about this, okay, is that a lot of times we don't know it. Because when you have the low stomach acid, the same symptoms for low stomach acid appear for high stomach acid. So you're still going to have that um, stomach acid irregularity. You're going to still have the same heartburn going on, but it could in fact be for the opposite. So so we're treating it with a, with a medication to lower stomach acid when maybe we have too low of stomach acid. And this also talks back again, this other um, article about how small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, which is what SIBO is, deconjugates bile acids, causing poor digestion. So let's talk about that science. So the gallbladder from the liver is releasing these bile um, acids. And these bile acids then use bacteria in the gut to make bile salts, which then are huge digestive enzymes for fat. So what happens when you have small intestinal bacteria overgrowth is you can actually cause these bile acids to not function as well. So maybe you're making plenty of enzymes, but the bacteria in the gut causes these enzymes to be less effective. And that's what bacteria can do. It actually disables some of these enzymes to help you digest the food. And this article talks about the gut microbiota and their metabolite, like bile acid, have been investigated as a cause of irritable bowel syndrome. So there you go. And if you look at the second highlight, deconjugation is considered the gateway reaction for further modification and mediated, mediated by bile salt hydrolysis. And what that means is hydrolysis being an enzyme saying that this deconjugation that's coming from the gut bacteria actually makes these bile salts that are supposed to be digesting your fats less effective. And so that can be also a problem because with GERD, there's association with high fat and more GERD symptoms, which again brings it back to a bacteria connection that is making the digestion impaired. So to me, this is really huge because it comes back to number one, getting the gut right from a bacteria perspective. And that means digestive enzymes for many people, especially as you age, because your digestive enzymes can be less effective as you age. So what do we mean by digestive enzymes? Where do they come from? Well, the pancreas makes digestive enzymes, and also we get enzymes from food, from plant-based foods. Also, we have enzymes from the bile, the bile acids that, that turn into the bile salts. Those are used as, 
is a uh, digestive agent. They're not really enzymes. They more or less break up the fats for us. So a lot of times we get tested for pancreatic enzymes and we're fine. We seem to make plenty of them. But once again, I want to drive home the point that you may make plenty of enzymes. The body produces what it's supposed to, but because of some of this bad bacteria, they don't function like they're supposed to. So you can make plenty of enzymes, but they're not doing the job they're supposed to. So that means that you may have to supplement with enzymes because some of the ones you have are not being functional. So some of the basic ones are lipase, protease, and amylase. Those are main ones, but we also have enzymes that are in plant-based um, products like um, foods that have uh, papaya and vegetables and certain fruits. A lot of these foods have the enzymes in them and these help with the digestion. Enzymes, yes, better raw, right? Because if you cook these foods, you can kill these enzymes. So I have some of my favorite ones I use. Um, transformation uh, enzymes make a great product, digest enzyme supplement. And some of the basic ones are in, that are in that are not just the pancreatic, but you have some of the plant-based. And also, I want to talk about hydrochloric acid. Okay, so with the stomach acid, when the stomach acid is low, you're going to be more prone for gut bacteria and also for other diseases. You don't absorb some of these vitamins and minerals. And as you age, you actually can have a problem with lower stomach acid. It just happens with age. So there's also bentane hydrochloride. This is the stomach acid. Now this typically you want to have an RD working with you, right? I mean, because I know a lot of people experiment and I'm not saying that, you know, that stomach acid isn't going to hurt you. Your body makes it. If you take too much of it, then you're going to feel the burn. But a lot of times taking one or two of these before a meal, making sure it's with a protein meal, because you need protein to help with this, it can make a huge difference for people. So bringing in digestive enzymes and bringing in some HCL, starting out with one at a meal that you have protein, you can feel a difference in lowering the symptoms. You can feel a difference right away with lowering the symptoms of reflux. So I wanted to, um, yeah, and with low with low stomach acid, same kind of thing that a lot of people will experience with IBS, abdominal pain, bloating, gas, diarrhea, constipation. So a lot of times when we think of um, irritable bowel disease or irritable bowel syndrome, not really disease, we're always thinking about reducing food. The FODMAPs died. Everybody's like, well, yeah, don't eat this. Don't eat that. And next thing you know, my patients are down to like 10 foods. And the less and less you start doing that, I mean, the less and less you, the more you start eliminate, eliminating these foods, then the less you're going to be able to tolerate the foods, okay? So over a period of time, your body will not be able to digest these foods because you just don't have them in your diet. That's, that's an important part of food is being able to keep a consistent but a variety source of foods so that the body can you know, be used to digesting these foods. And what can happen when people get irritable bowel syndrome is they don't ever think about maybe they have a digestive problem. Maybe they need to look at some other things before eliminating the foods that in, in all practical purposes really are foods that they need. These are the foods, the plant foods that can help them build a good gut. But the ones that are always, always a problem are going to be those uh, high carbohydrates with fiber. They're going to be the carbohydrates that have a lot of fiber. Those are going to be the tougher ones to digest. And those are the ones typically that we see eliminated. So I always tell people, you know, the best way to do this is let's get some good digestive enzymes. Let's make, if you're on a PPI, maybe we should try doing a little stomach acid. See if that helps. Take some of these digestive enzymes. The biggest um, benefit I've seen with patients is actually with the digestive enzymes. And then it actually clears up some of the reflux. So how does the cycle work? 
It's acid reflex meds, lower stomach acid over prolonged periods. Makes sense, right? And it doesn't mean that you know any different because remember, low stomach acid has almost the same symptoms as having too much acid. So this then increases small intestinal bacteria overgrowth because now you have less stomach acid because you have medications you're taking and this increases bacteria that then make it into the gut. This also then decreases enzyme function. So now the bacteria in the gut is making your enzymes less effective. And this increases more small intestinal bacteria overgrowth and more GERD symptoms. So I hope this helps. I, I wanted to you know, try to do these in bite-sized pieces. Um, a lot of people have told me to try to do a lot of my um, information in, in less time and try to make it more concise. So let me know if I'm doing that or if you have any comments on that. Um, and also too, this can also, and I'm going to go back to um, food addiction and the Myrna method. And to me, it's all about how we sustain our bodies to live our leanest and healthiest lives. So I'm always kind of bringing it back to that. And a lot of what's going on with this bacteria in the gut, you cannot forget that there is a relationship with this and food addiction. It can change the palate. So you have all this going on. You're taking medications a lot of times for these acid reflux, causing all these issues with the bacteria can actually change your palate as well. Because that's what this bacteria does. It can cause addiction issues. And the other thing that we always have to keep in mind that it comes down to the four areas that we know increase a lot of the food addiction and, and really issues with obesity are how muscles work, insulin. And in this case, we're talking about gut bacteria and of course the brain chemicals. So I'm gonna leave it open for discussion in case anybody wants to comment or any questions. Um, I leave open the chat and hopefully I can answer them. And if you have acid reflux, you know, share with us your, if you've had, if, if, if any of this has helped you or if you tried it. So I will leave it open. You go ahead and un unmute your mic. Very informal. Hey, Myrna. Um, so when we're looking at those two digestive enzymes that you're recommending, um, can you, for any type of food, maybe sensitivity, would these work for helping with, with anything like that, with the IBS? Yes. So, you know, with IBS, it's going to be different for everybody, as you know, but a lot of times what I have found is that they're not digesting well. They really have a digestion issue. So um, actually, if you can get a hold of me, I will turn you on to Transformation Enzyme Company because they have a whole area for practitioners. And I think you would find um, some of their information really helpful. So if you can do that, let me let me turn you on to some of their information because they have a lot of videos on that they work with doctors on some of the things that I might um, be able to help you with in treating patients. But yeah, answer to your question, yes, absolutely. Dig poor digestion is typically due to bacteria overgrowth, and it's just this this combination that goes on together. You. You fix the bacteria overgrowth and you can actually help with the digestion or you fix the digestion and it can turn help with the um, intestinal bacteria overgrowth. So I don't know. Did I answer that question or what was coming? Yes. In? Yes. Okay. Uh, thank you, Myrna. That's really generous of you. I, I know like, I guess I'm thinking for me, um, I can't have an egg or I am asleep for three hours. I probably have a little reflux. I have stomach problems and I kind of wanted to test this on myself. <laughs> yeah. So I'm kind of excited. <laughs> well, I'm going to email me because I think um, you can tell them you're an RD and that I recommended you. Um, but I, I could get you on some conferences with some. And actually, I want to have one of their RDs come speak for us in a couple of weeks. I'm trying to get her on the schedule because she can really give the lowdown on these digestive enzymes. 
but yeah, I, I've, I mean, I've had several patients that were a total mess and this has made a big difference for them. Yeah. And I see, I see so many clients that have just shredded their gut from drug addiction or alcohol abuse and this could, and they, and they're now sober, they're now healing. Right. And it, it, I think this, so I'm excited to hear if if we could chat with her. This is, this is fascinating. Oh, just she you. will turn mm-hmm. you on. Yeah, I'm going to bring her in as a guest speaker. I'm trying to get it on her, on her schedule. Um, but I think for you, she will um, she'll help you. She'll she'll let you talk to some doctors that have had some really good uh, results as well. Um, and I think that this whole gut issue for me is all about digestion and gut bacteria. And also I wanted to shed a little light on the stomach acid as well, because I think a lot of times with GERD, what we're really seeing is small intestinal bacteria overgrowth and low HCL. And we're treating it with medications that do, they just keep having to take more and more medications. So, um, and I'd be curious too, if you have any results with patients, I would love for you to share with us too come in later just say hey i'm you know doing oh, some just just so so everybody knows i when you work for a hospital administration sometimes you, you are limited on what you're able to do and what you're not supplements is something that has very strongly been nope <laughs> but you know i think any knowledge that we can glean I, i'm i'm all for it and then maybe down the road i can work it in in some ways but you know, you guys get everything under the sun with Myrna. You're not held back from anything. And and that's just amazing. So you're not in a hospital setting. They don't allow RDs to. I'm not allowed to do anything with supplements. I can recommend like a general multivitamin, but I'm not allowed to recommend brands. I'm not. So, um, but this kind of, you know, I want to know this stuff. And right. I think at a certain point, you know, we there's new opportunities right. coming around and and we can just work with what I'm allowed and what I'm not allowed to do and so and I will <laughs> tell you um also with the digestive enzymes because I didn't want to like pour everything but there's so much to talk about the activity the pH how all that works um I kind of like this company because they pay attention to that and not all supplements even understand that. So, and we'll have some more discussions on that, but I wanted to sort of lead up into the information that I do that sort of bring you little pieces so that I can can connect um, different disease states for you guys with the gut. And I think um, acid reflux is one of those, that there is a connection with bacteria. And that was what I was hoping to do tonight. But yeah, anybody that um, wants more information on this, um, I can... Provide it. Oh, a hand, hey, Myrna. Yes, Marvely. How you doing? I'm doing I'm good. fine. How are you? Good. I just good. Want, uh, one thing you said really resonated with me. Um, I had, um, I had a problem with some acid reflux, and my doctor that I went to in Utah is a naturopath, mm-hmm. and he put me on hydrochloric acid. And that took care of the problem. So my issue was definitely that I had low stomach acid. Right. And so he had me take, um, increase my dose, he had my, t- me titrate my dose up until it got to the point where I felt a burn. Right. And that's where I knew I was at the, where my acid needed to be. Right. And that really helped a whole bunch so and also, I, did you have IBS? Did you have um, any type of gut issues like bloating, irritable bowel syndrome? Oh, yes. Okay. Oh, yes. So you see the connection because you're like, I've been yes. there with that, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I usually start people as an RD. I'll start them just on 600 to 750 and just like what she said. And then you wait and maybe you can take another one. But you're going to go up to dosage where your body's going to go, okay, we're at our limit. Because the body makes about 1.5 liters, right? So maybe you're half of that. Maybe you need half of that. Or maybe you only need a fourth of it. 
But you'll find that when you hit that point, your body's going to definitely, like you said, let you know. And did it help your IBS? Did you notice that that fixed right away that started to go away as well? You know, I didn't really make that connection um, that that was the issue because it wasn't really bad. I just noticed, okay. you know, that I had some some issues with it, but um, it wasn't super bad that time. The, the biggest thing was every time I bent over, I would have this acid reflux. Right. And, um, and that completely took care of that. Awesome. Yeah. And that's why I do this. Cause sometimes people spend their whole life. Imagine if she would have just, they would have typically, she had a doctor that kind of knew this, but typically she would have been given acid reflux medication. She would have been given something to relieve the symptom. And maybe really the problem wasn't that she had too much acid but this she didn't have enough because the symptoms are the same, as I said. But anyways, thank you so much for sharing. I, I appreciate that. Any uh, other questions? Hey, I, I believe it's Marvely. I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. How did your, how was your physician able to test that it was low rather than high? He didn't test. Uh, you'll, you know, right away if you've got too much, because when you take it, you'll get that burn right, right away. But wow. if you keep oh. tolerating more and more and more, you don't have enough. Right. Okay. Now that's something I might be able to call certain physicians on and ask him to do. Right. That's, that's, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. And so in McKenna, as RDs, you know, we are licensed to do this. So uh, I know the hospital frowns on it, but you have a license, girl. You, you, you can do this. So, um, I know. But the on my own private. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, you know, typically for me, it's usually two for most people when they have it, you know, not one. Usually if they're low in stomach acid, is it going to do how many did you start with Marvely? Yeah, to be honest, I don't remember, okay. um, but I'm going to be going to um, to Utah uh, on Friday. And the doctor that I, I also worked for this doctor and he's a very good friend. So I was going to ask him when I go there uh, to give me the protocol of what I do. Cause I, I, I think I need to do it again. Are and you having so issues I, again? Yes, I am having issues again. So I was going to try to just have him give me his protocol that he, he uses, get in to see him while I'm there. Awesome. And also yeah. maybe some digestive enzymes. Does he do that as well? You know, he probably does, um, but I don't. I don't know that he does a lot of a lot of natural uh, remedies. So I'm sure he probably does. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And you know, the thing with digestive enzymes is you can't OD on them. So if you take too many of them, the body just breaks them down into proteins, which is nice. And you know, your body does make hydrochloric acid. So, like Marvely says. It's just that you'll be make you'll just have too much. So it's not like it's a serious thing if you OD on this. No, your body will tell you. It may be a little uncomfortable, but then you know to back off from where it was that you you'd hit the limit. And also, once you start fixing some of these things with the SIBO, with the small intestinal bacteria overgrowth, a lot of times you may not need more hydrochloric acid as well. Which you found that to be true, right, Marvely? Like you took took the supplement and then you got better and then you didn't need it. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't used it for years. Right. So, I mean, that was quite a few years ago and I'm just now having a problem again. So I'm just guessing that that's what the issue is and thinking I need to try it again. Right. Cause it's right. not really bad right now, but I, I occasionally will, will get that. And so I'm thinking, and I do have a lot of the irritable bowel symptoms, symptoms right now, um, more so than I did at that time. So, so I think maybe we do digestive enzymes. Just saying. That, um, yeah. I mean, to me, irritable bowel is poor digestion. That's why. Uh -huh. the, that's what the body's trying to do. It's trying to digest your food for you. And when you can't, you have irritable bile because your bowel because your body can't break down the food. Well, I would love I would love to a uh, recommendation for what to get on that, Myrna. If you can. Okay. Let me so, know what to just, just the digest. Yeah. Let me take you here because I am on their program and 
Yeah, and I can add it in. So if you go to transformation enzymes, if you go, you can see, you guys can see my screen, right? Yep. Okay. And if you go to shop and you go to digestive enzymes and you click on digest, this is the one right here, the one I recommend. And if you actually put my, if you put Hague, the spelling of my last name, H-A-A-G-25, H-A-A-G-25, you'll get 25% off. Oh, cool. Yeah, and um, McKenna, that's why I wanted to turn you on to this because they have a physician program that you will qualify as an RD and you can also provide a discount for your patients. Okay, so I wanted to I wanted to have you get in their protocol like I am, so that you could develop your own, um, you know, relationship with them. And also, they do have a really good McKenna for physicians. They have a great education center too that they'll turn you on to. But anyways, Marvely, I would start on that, and you want to take um, I would take two of those. If you're having it, I would take two of those at each meal. I would really kind of dose it up. Okay? okay. And then what I would also take is I would do a probiotic and they have a plant-based one that I've I've actually had pretty good is this uh Plantophilus. This one here, I would take one before bed. And this has got the lactobacillus, which is if you have gut issues, um, you don't want to just throw in a lot of probiotics because it can create more issues. But lactobacillus is the one that isn't going to cause any issues. So a lot of times when people have SIBO and they take a probiotic, sometimes it can make their symptoms worse. It's weird as that sounds. But this is the one I serve people on when they have a lot of gut issues and then they can go on a normal probiotic and some of the other strains aren't going to be an issue. Um, so I would do, I would do this at night and then I would take two digestive enzymes with every meal, really knock it out of the park and then let me know, you know, how it works probably within two days if it's going to make a difference. And that is what's really cool about some of these, you know, fixing the digestion is then the small bacteria overgrowth will diminish. And then Marvely, your GERD may go away. That it's would be all, awesome. It's, yeah, it's all it's all interconnected. A lot of times you take care of the GERD and then it's kind of bio-directional and then you start getting less SIBO and then all of a sudden you can digest better or you take care of the digestion and the SIBO gets better and then the GERD gets better. So this is all this little swirly swirl thing um, that I wanted to make sure that you guys sort of, um, got tonight. I wanted to bring it back to the bacteria and I wanted to talk about how this gut bacteria affects acid reflux. This is where you get that burning up the pipe and how it's related to lower stomach acid possibly because you take medications to lower it, or you could just have lower stomach acid. This causes more bacteria to go into the gut, which then affects the digestive enzymes, which they don't work like they should. And then you get even more gut bacteria, which that increases more GERD. So I wanted you guys to get that whole cycle. And the way that we fix it is that we think about what's causing it, possibly give ourselves more hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes. Instead of live our life on medications and spend the rest of our life deciding all the foods we can't eat, like they do the FODMATs. Well, I can't eat a whole 20 foods. Oh, by the way, when you do have SIBO, it does lead to food sensitivity. And I think you had asked me that, McKenna. Um, and there's a lot, like with food sensitivity, we can do, we can do a live stream on that. It's yeah, you do you do build up a little bit of immune response with food. And what can happen is with poor digestion and all and SIBO, it can actually made the make the food sensitivity worse. Do you notice, McKenna, that um your food sensitivity changes? Like you yes. can have right. 
Right. So you can have it where, you know, this month I, I can eat that. And then next month you find you can't even tolerate it. Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. With, you know, how I pair the food, how much, how active I am, my mood from the quantity consumed. Um, yeah. And that's something I'll, I'll chat with my clients about a lot too, um, Mm -hmm. with food sensitivities and, um, so, but my other, I had a quick question and I'm sure I, I could get with you more with it. How long do you feel that the clients need to be on those, like the probiotic and the, the digestive enzymes? Could they rebuild their gut back and then get off of those? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, truthfully, um, you can't OD on digestive enzymes. The only thing about digestive enzymes is they're expensive, the good ones. And that's kind of what stinks about that. That's what I was noticing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, and that, and so there's some that are cheaper, but I'm not sure. I don't get as good of results as I do on this these. From this mm-hmm. company, I'm getting good results, McKenna. And mm-hmm. you're going to be able to get in and um, listen to some of these physicians that are using them. So I'm always like, okay, guys, you know, are you getting good results? Or, you know, I want to know what they're getting with their patients. And so I'm seeing it with this company. And the thing with digestive enzymes or with anything, you don't know what's in it because it's not regulated. And a lot of times with digestive enzymes, it has to do with activity. It has to do with pH. So they can't just throw this thing that says digestive enzymes and you're taking it because you may be taking something that isn't going to do a thing for you, Okay. Um, yeah. So answer your question, if they fix the SIBO and they fix and, and they can get that taken care of, then you're going to go back to normal. Then the digestion is going to improve. Everything improves. And just like what Marva Lee says, yeah, I mean, I was fine for two or three years and then boom, not fine. So, and I think also too, McKenna, there's a huge, I don't know if you were in my live stream where I talked about the biodirectional um, with the brain and the gut so that you can actually have anxiety or stress and it can change your microbiome. Were you in the live stream when I had a whole thing? Yeah. And to me, that blows my mind, right? Mm -hmm. And you know that to be true, right? I mean, because you know, if you have a really stressful day at the hospital, what tends to happen? Then you have really bad IBS, right? Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. I'd be really curious. I mean, I'd love for you to try these digestive enzymes and then report back to us and see if, because you really sounds like you have really bad ideas, correct? Yeah. I I think if I hadn't met you, I, and I didn't start learning about all of this, I think I would be obese. I think I would have a lot of problems and it wouldn't. And if I didn't do this or even met you, I I don't think I ever would have learned any of this. And it just, I would have been really struggling. (laughs) Well, thank you. I appreciate it. That's that means a lot. But anyways, yeah. So get on the stuff and then report back to us. Let us know if you and same with you also, Marvely, if you um, get on the enzymes, too. I mean, I I just started working with this company. um, I guess since Thanksgiving, I had a really bad patient. I think I told you guys a story. Um, and she had failure to thrive on her medical records. And she she was really pretty much homebound. They had tested her for everything, spent hundreds of thousands. I mean, literally for five years, she's 24 years old. And I'd love to have her come talk and tell her story. And basically, when you have a medical record, as you know, McKenna, failure to thrive, that's not a good sign, right? That means that, well can mean a lot of things, but it's not good. She was down to 99 pounds. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with her because they, everything seemed to be working fine. And what was wrong with her was a digestive problem. Believe it or not. She was on a, she had done a crazy diet, uh, when she was about 18 or 19, she got on this celery juice or some kind of diet. And this caused her digestive enzymes to go wacko. And she wasn't, her bowel salts were not working. She was unable to eat anything. We started bringing the diet. So I really had to find the right company because she was on digestive enzymes and they weren't working. And I knew that the one she was on, I didn't really know for sure why, 
but I knew I did some research and I realized you had to have the right pH put together with different enzymes. You had to have the right activity. And this company had that. And then I started working with them. And then I started getting really, re really good results with other patients as well. So, and I'm always hesitant. I, I feel um, it's kind of weird because you don't really want to recommend, you want to recommend stuff, but you don't, you know, you know, you know how it is. You feel like, well, you want people to be able to buy anything they want, but I'm, I mean, I've got good results. So I feel like I should share that with you guys. Um, anyways, any other questions anybody has on anything? Okay. I hope this was helpful and I will see you guys next week. Thanks for joining. Bye-bye.